So, um, yeah, so today is, uh, so today is April 14th. The last time I checked in with you guys, uh, on the vlog, my mother-in-law, the hospital, she's in the hospital for like three days. She came home. I want to say she was home for around eight days. I can't remember exactly. In those eight days, she saw some friends. Her sister came down. She went around Boulder and did fun stuff. Monday, that 13th, the 13th, she was not doing well, was rushed to the hospital. And on the 14th, she passed. <clears throat> Just a whirlwind. I mean, this, this entire last year and a half has been the most emotional trying, challenging time I've ever experienced in my life. I just, it's been so crazy to watch what Alex has gone through, what her mother went through, and then also to have my own experience within it um, that makes me reflect on my past, my future, my present, like a potent dose of some real life shit. It's really sad, like it is like, <laughs> It has got such a huge wake to it. Ron has such an untimely, horrible scenario surrounding his passing that it's just that it's so hard to grasp. You know, it's like, like still to this day, there's times where I'm just like, this is not real life. And you know, just one person's negligence just really sent all of our lives into this crazy tailspin. It's been really hard to deal with. I can only imagine what my wife is dealing with. You know, I can only understand to a point because I'm not her and uh, it's, it's been brutal. There's a lot that I gained from this. I know this is just like cliche as fuck but like spending time with someone who is older at the end of their life is very insightful and is very eye-opening with all of these things that have happened. Uh, losing friends and family and just my own life. Um, it just again very potent. Constantly making you look at like what this all is, why we're here, what we're doing, what we're leaving behind. It's just crazy, you know, it's a trip and a half, an emotional roller coaster to say the least. I miss my mother-in-law. Like, I never thought I'd live with my mother-in-law and, and I never thought I'd get used to living with her. I never thought that it would be something that I eventually I would miss. It's just so crazy, uh, so again, so challenging. It's just been a long year and a half of just trying to give her the best life that we possibly could. I, th I think we achieved that. I believe she was holding on to see what the end result of the court case was going to be. I think she was holding on for me and Alex just to make sure we were okay. She left her, her little dog Fiona behind so we've inherited this dog and really worried about Fiona at first but now she seems to be doing okay. It's just crazy. It's like life just... <laughs> life is just so short. It's just such a blip. It's such a blink. I mean the word of the day for me is like potent but it's also so concentrated so much in a person's life deep love for things and the interest that people have and like what people do with their time here it's just such a fucking trip dude apparent to me in life what to do well it's not apparent it's apparent on life what not to do which is waste my fucking time as i like navigate through all this new stuff new life more changes, continuing the shop. It sounds like we'll probably be in Boulder for a while, a few years at least, while we figure everything out. We have a lot to do as far as managing all these new responsibilities we have. You know, while we grieve the loss of two main pillars in our family. Yeah, it's just, it's been a crazy ride. You guys never know what's coming. Like, you never know what's coming. Good or bad. You just never know. So, be a good person. I guess, is the lesson. It's been a month. I can't even believe I can say that. Trying to plan for the future, which has like a weird undertone. You know, it's like hard. It's so final, you know, to accept that like we're moving on and that there's, no, there's nothing left of this life that we had just a month ago. It's just always changing, dude. Life is like always fucking changing. The uh, shop anniversary, technically April 1st. We also ran a successful first year at a tattoo shop. All thanks is to the people who get tattooed by me. I mean, a lot of you travel from fucking far distances when you could easily just go down the street and get tattooed by somebody else. And you choose to come get it by me, which is just like super humbling always, forever. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone who can see the difference, who's willing to take the journey for something that they want. Admirable to me. I don't like personally having only things that are near me. So uh, yeah, it's just super cool. Anyway, shout out to the people who uh, have made the journey to get tattooed. 
and those of you who will journey in the future. And then, of course, the shirt business ever since COVID has suffered. Dude, everything's just fucked. Everybody knows the world. We slipped into a completely different fabric of time and space. It's all when we all watched Tiger King and everyone just like collectively got, whatchamacallit, uh, hypnotized. Something happened. PC, before COVID. Things were a lot easier. I got frustrated a lot about shipping times before COVID. Now that just seems really funny because it's ridiculous. This is a funny story that I never told. A friend of Alex's went to go for a job interview, a place that used to print shirts for us. She noticed a box, two boxes, uh, our names on them, you know, says it was Teddy. So, Ern doesn't know this yet. I haven't even told Ern. This is how nice of a guy I am now. A, the dude who I used to work with there doesn't work there anymore. That's how long it's been. And then, yeah, some chick is like, hey, yeah, there's two boxes. They've been here for years. The two full boxes of shirts. <laughs> Not printed, just blanks. Ready to go. Really nice blanks, too. Before we left to go to Vegas, our man Dirty Ern was supposed to pick up all the stuff. Uh, clearly he did not, so now there's two boxes of t-shirts to print on. Obviously quick run on those colors because it's limited stock. Nonetheless, this is the life. Skateboards are dropping. Ah, uh, it's my office that is always dirty. A lot of people will look at a dirty desk and they'll go, wow, that's a dirty desk, but you should look at Albert Einstein's desk. I'm not calling myself a genius, but... I have the desk of a genius. The boards are dropping. First skateboard. Uh, never in my life um, was able to go pro as a skateboarder. So this is the next best thing. It's like getting a clip with a shot. Doing it there. It's like doing a kickflip down a three stair right now. Exposure, dog. Next thing you know, he's gonna be on fucking, what's that show? Ink Master. Ink Master. That would be incredible. I would love to watch that. I come. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I don't want that. That'd be so stressful. I come, I come root for you. <laughs> 